Blue Origin completed its first spacewalk in the summer. A petition has emerged calling for it to remain in orbit. The petition has garnered over 200,000 signatures, clearly showing the public's disillusionment with Jeff Bezos's space company, Blue Origin. In fact, in the last two decades, what we remember most about the name Blue Origin is innovation and contribution. Ironically, even though Blue Origin tried to catch up by copying SpaceX's projects, the company's achievements seem to be nil and even backfired. Find out all the interesting information in today's episode of NR Studio. Before continuing, we need your support by like, subscribe, and sharing so that we are more enthusiastic about updating the next episode. Starting from a small room in the family garage with an initial capital of $300,000, in 29 years, Jeff Bezos has transformed Amazon into the world's leading multinational technology company. Amazon's prominence has reached such levels that a mere entry of Relentless.com will redirect users to the Amazon website. The story of Jeff Bezos' startup founding has become a source of inspiration for every unicorn around the world. Unfortunately, his space company, Blue Origin, doesn't seem to be operating at the same pace and is particularly far behind its main space rival, Elon Musk's SpaceX. It's fair to say that Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos have a lot in common. They share a deep passion for space travel and the commercialization of space. They are both billionaires who have amassed fortunes from hugely successful businesses and then confidently leverage that money into the space industry. Bezos had the financial means to establish Blue Origin in 2000, thanks to the significant profits he garnered from Amazon. Two years later, SpaceX was born thanks to the money Elon Musk raised from the sale of his company to PayPal, which was then acquired by eBay. Now, more than 20 years later, let's look back and see how far they've come. SpaceX presently asserts its dominance in the realm of space exploration through numerous record-breaking accomplishments, whereas Blue Origin consistently remains in a subordinate position. At the heart of this assertion is Elon Musk's team spirit, which is unafraid of risk and failure. In 2006, after making millions from the sale of PayPal to eBay and investing a third of Musk's fortune in the space venture, Musk's space company quickly attempted to launch its first rocket, only to suffer a fuel leak that caused a fire. The next two launches successfully completed the first stage of flight, but encountered problems after separation that prevented the spacecraft from reaching orbit. Three consecutive failures nearly drove the company into bankruptcy. Worse still, under the influence of Murphy's Law, Musk also ran into financing problems at Tesla and reportedly woke up from nightmares, screaming and feeling physical pain from the stress. Anecdotally, adversity tends to fortify one's resilience. Finally, God gave him one last chance on SpaceX's fourth flight, just as funding was running low. On September 28, 2008, the first successful launch of a Falcon 1 took place at Amalek Island in the Marshall Islands. It was also the first successful orbital launch from a privately funded company, marking a major shift in an industry that had been dominated by government programs. In contrast, BO was obsessed with getting everything right, which explains why, rather than innovate, they deliberately moved more slowly to emulate SpaceX's rocket. There are a number of similarities between the two companies' rockets. New Glenn is Blue Origin's heavy lift rocket, designed to place both inhabited and uninhabited payloads into Earth orbit and into space. Like SpaceX's Falcon 9, New Glenn is a two-stage booster with a reusable first stage, which mission planners expect to be able to land vertically after stage separation. However, in terms of size, New Glenn is taller than the Falcon 9 at 300 feet, 98 meters and its payload fairing is larger than the SpaceX rocket at 23 feet, 7 meters in diameter. The vehicle features a reusable first stage powered by seven 7B4 engines that use liquid oxygen and methane as propellant, similar to SpaceX's Raptor rocket engines, and an expendable second stage with two BE-3U engines, which use liquid oxygen and hydrogen as propellant. Like the Falcon 9, the new Glenn first stage is equipped with engines that can be reignited during descent to ensure a soft landing, and the rocket has six expandable landing legs that pop up just before impact. The Falcon 9 first stage has four legs. Blue Origin also envisions New Glenn executing landing maneuvers on a mobile, maritime platform. 
Currently, SpaceX lands its rockets on drone ships. New Glenn's current landing platform ship, Jacqueline, named after Bezos' mother, measures an impressive 115 meters by 150 meters, exceeding the size of the platforms used by SpaceX. It replaces an earlier version of Blue Origin's mobile maritime landing platform, also called Jacqueline. The New Glenn first stage, unlike the Falcon 9, is equipped with four movable aerodynamic control surfaces, known as fins, which allow for attitude adjustments during first stage landing and descent. Beneath these fins, the first stage is also adorned with two straps. Strapes are elongated, wing-like extensions that regulate airflow and enhance stability. The strikes on the new Glen will provide a slight boost during first stage flight, and in general, strikes are used to improve the stability of both the rocket and the aircraft in flight. Fins and striking features impart a markedly distinct profile to the new Glen, in stark contrast to the sleek design of the Falcon 9. The new Glen has the potential to exceed the Falcon 9 in terms of payload capacity. If all goes according to plan, the new Glen will be capable of placing 45 to 360 kilograms, 90 to 800 pounds of payload into Earth orbit, and 6 to 800 kilograms, 10 to 1,800 pounds, of payload on a lunar trajectory. Meanwhile, the Falcon 9 at full power can carry 22,800 kilograms, 50,000 pounds of payload into low Earth orbit. However, SpaceX has two other strengths, the Falcon Heavy and Starship. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy is capable of lifting up to 63,800 kilograms to LEO at maximum fuel usage, 57,000 kilograms with booster recovery, and less than 50,000 kilograms with recovery of both booster and core. Starship is truly exceptional. As the world's largest and most powerful rocket, Starship promises to launch more than 200 tons to LEO in its third version, which is four times the capacity of New Glenn. Starship version 3's thrust is 10,000 tons, far surpassing New Glenn's 1,743 tons. Compared to SpaceX, it's clear that Blue's innovations are less ambitious. In a memo from 2018, an executive from Blue Origin articulated the following. In a rocket world where everything has changed and cutting-edge technology is being created every day, it's clear that weakness seems unacceptable. A section of the Blue Origin memo notes the extremely long work hours expected at SpaceX, stating that fatigue is part of their work strategy and employees are expected to work through vacations or not take them at all. One Blue Origin executive even suggested in the memo that the standard 40-hour work week would not be sufficient to meet the company's ambitions. Another executive stated in the memo, we need to discuss the time and effort our people put into achieving our mission. Additionally, if we expect more than 40 hours, let's be clear about it and evaluate personnel based on that guidance. In line with this statement, SpaceX's Musk emphasized that no one has ever changed the world by working 40 hours a week and suggested that individuals need to put in anywhere from 80 to 100 plus hours per week to achieve that. To add further credence, former SpaceX employee Josh Bohm stated in a 2017 Quora post that his workdays often exceeded 12 hours. I often worked 12 plus hours a day and had many sleepless nights in the office. But again, this was not because I was forced to but because I loved my job and recognized the value I was bringing to the team. Technically, I reported to the CIO, but I was essentially self-managed, as were many others there at the time. A phrase we often used was, you are your own slave driver. Thanks to the breakneck pace of work, SpaceX has undergone an astonishing transformation from a young unicorn to a new space titan. As of November 6th, SpaceX has set a record with its 400th Falcon 400 launch surpassing all rocket launch organizations to date. This year, SpaceX set an initial target of 144 rocket launches. However, due to serious conflicts with the U.S. federal agency, the FAA, that goal seems increasingly distant. Although the company will not reach its initial goal, it is still targeting 30 additional launches by 2024, which equates to roughly one launch every two days. More importantly, according to Kiko Donchev, SpaceX's Vice President of Launch, the only way to achieve this goal is by focusing on safety and reliability. Above all, we must keep the team safe and ensure 100% mission success. Although born two years before SpaceX, 
Blue has been quietly conducting research without the rush or public spotlight. The new Glenn rocket has experienced a number of delays since its development began before 2013. First announced in 2016, it was designed as a heavy lift launch vehicle with a two-stage configuration capable of carrying significant payloads into orbit. However, the schedule for its first launch has been repeatedly delayed. In 2016, the rocket's design was publicly announced with plans for a reusable first stage powered by a 7B4 engine. Blue Origin has conveyed that the new rocket will be significantly larger than New Shepard, despite being the smallest within the Blue Origin orbital vehicle family. Blue Origin projected that the inaugural orbital launch from the Florida Launch Facility would occur no sooner than 2020. However, by early 2020, this timeline had been revised to late 2021. In August 2020, the Air Force announced that New Glenn was not selected for Phase II launch procurement for the National Security Space Launch Program. In light of this, in February 2021, Blue Origin announced that the first flight would be delayed until late 2022 at the earliest, citing adjustments in launch vehicle development after losing a key Pentagon contract last year. In March 2022, the expected first launch of New Glenn was pushed back to the fourth quarter of 2023 at the earliest. In January 2024, New Glenn's first stage was being moved at Kennedy Space Center from the factory to the launch complex in preparation for a launch scheduled for 2024. The initial launch is currently scheduled for November 2024, carrying a prototype Blue Ring spacecraft. This represents another delay from previous projections. The launch delay has resulted in a number of impacts. It is important to note that NASA had originally planned to launch two identical small satellites to Mars on New Glenn's maiden flight in October 2024, but later decided to pull them from the flight. Escape and Exploration of Plasma Acceleration Dynamics, Escape. The small satellites were ready to be completed prior to flight and fueled with nitrogen tetroxide and hydrazine propellants for a mission aimed at studying the Martian atmosphere, but this crucial step was canceled. NASA harbored concerns that should New Glenn fail to be prepared for the scheduled launch interval, it would necessitate the draining of fuel from both spacecraft. This scenario is fraught with disadvantages, particularly in light of the associated financial implications and the potential hazards posed to the integrity of the spacecraft during the process. NASA is currently considering a prospective launch window for the two spacecraft in mid-2025, or potentially in 2026, possibly utilizing a future New Glenn mission. Following the failure of the escape mission, Blue Origin is now planning the maiden flight of New Glenn to carry hardware related to its Blue Ring project. Blue Ring can be defined as a platform designed for launching hardware into specific orbits, adjusting satellite orbits, refueling, and cloud computing in orbit. This reduces the pressure on Blue Origin because the payload is the result of the company's own design and development and is not dependent on third-party customers with their own deadlines. That's it for today's Epiopti. Thank you for your time.